there are many open source projects on github for you to contribute to and i mean many uh something like over 100 million public repositories are on github alone this doesn't even include gitlab or the other online server repo server repositories available and so the question comes where do you even begin where do you as an individual country which which project which one how do you know if you're gonna have skills ready to contribute and add some useful code how are you gonna to fix any of the bugs bugs and correctly but well, i'm gonna show you how you can start getting into it so why should you even contribute to open source projects in the first place well uh, you see a lot of like kind of promotion to here pro projects you should make for beginners intermediate advance you don't really see many of them talk about about open source projects and contributing to them and i think if i were to hire someone and i saw someone that has a reputation of contributing to open source projects maybe a bit more inclined to actually hire them and i'll explain why so here we have the bevy game engine and if we go to the contributing.md which a lot of open source big projects will have you can click on it and it will sort of tell you how you can contribute your code to it and what practices you should do uh telling you to get oriented what the what the goal of the project is because it's not just a piece of code you can't really contribute anything random really you've got to fit whatever their purpose is uh the the actual organization you can see it's actually very detailed on what you can add uh how you should make uh changes to bevy so discussions issues and pull requests a form way for us to get track of bug features obviously to create an issue that's a really good way to start a discussion is also great like possible features you might want to add and then finally a pull request your code that you'll want to contribute so they can review and approve it now the difference to this as opposed to your own project is that you have to go through a strict code review with your own project you just add what you want whatever you whenever you like if you ever got a couple of friends maybe you do go through this but it's not the same this is quite like being at a job as a programmer when you're programming in your workplace you will have your code from the, the company's code you will make a change you will make a pull request saying these are the change to make and a senior developer or a colleague come along review the code either tell you to make these changes or to approve it or they may make their own change in that pull request and so because this is a lot similar the same when you get to your job you're going to be familiarized with Git and how the workflow works. And I think as an, as new employees come in, they're going to you know fit right in as like, this person's already done, had experience in this section, especially with juniors who have come out of graduation and haven't got as much coding experience specifically in the job. Because my experience was when I worked in, in doing all these modules in computer science when I was a student, it's just nothing like working at an actual job. You just do your projects, you submit it, and then you you get your grade. So where should you start? I think you should look at what libraries, packages, and stuff have you used with the language that you're the most familiar with. And for me, one of the projects I contributed one, the first made first one I did was with Raylib Go. When I used this, I noticed there was a missing binding, as this binds to Raylib, which is written in C. And I simply made a pull request to this with the fix. So firstly, this doesn't have a contributing.md, and that's because this is a binding, and a binding is essentially just connecting a package that is in a different language or software and linking it with a one that so it runs in a different language. But this is written in Golang, and we're connecting it to the original Raylib, which is written in C. So it's essentially just creating, converting the functions in C so they work in Go. So it's like calling to it, and that's all it is really. So there's no need for contribute.md because we're not adding new features. We're just making sure that they run on this language. Before I started working on the fix and also creating the pull request, I made sure to check the issues and the pull request that this feature wasn't already being worked on or someone. Else. And so if we go back to my first pull request back in 2022, I made my pull request. I forked the project as and I said this is what the, I'm going to add. And within this commit, I add some i add the bindings that were missing and the way i did this was i read through the code and i realized oh this is how they do the bindings i'm going to copy it because it's how it matches they said merge thanks and that was it it was a easy fix for me it didn't seem like much like it wasn't actually a big commitment but it was it was my first step into contributing something that was open source and it was like a nice experience and it felt like it was felt quite rewarding to be part of something that a lot of other people use 
and that I was feeling appreciated. However, my biggest contribution I've probably made is, is towards Mine Clone 2, which is a like a Minecraft open source version of Minecraft using the mine test kind of game engine. And the reason I did this was I was kind of playing around in a game and I noticed that a feature was missing. Once again, like the railer version, I was like, oh, this feature is missing. And I looked, decided, you know what, I'm going to try and add them, add the missing feature. Uh, what I did is I went through the issues and I looked, searched for the issue I was thinking, which was typically with the grindstone. I essentially just looked through and it's like, hey, is, has anyone uh, added this issue and then is anyone working on it? And then this was actually talked about. I don't have actually made the PR. So if I go to the PR as well and check there, you can see that they were added, but no functionality was. And so eventually I took the effort upon me. I took the mantle and decided to add the grindstone myself. And I added a nice little image. I like what I did. I followed their contributing MD. It will touch us. And then they test it and they approved it. And this was very, it works good. Well, I did eventually move on and do the stone cutter. I didn't finish this one, someone took the mantle for me, I got busy, but I'm glad that my start to the project was finished and I did thank them for adding it. And I was probably credited in the update saying, hey, this functionality was added by this person, which is a very rewarding experience to feel be thanked for your work and you're doing this for no cost at all, you're just doing it and to see people that appreciate your work and use it in the game is, is fantastic. I will say it can be a daunting experience because you have no idea what you're doing was up to the quality that they expect or that the fix is rubbish. And the stone cut was very difficult and my implementation perhaps wasn't the greatest when, but luckily someone came along and finished up and hopefully improved it. And being told like, oh, you know, maybe you should have these fixes from this other person can be like uh, I'm not that good but don't let that put you down because people are still very thankful that you started the kind of the the flow had I not started this PR maybe no one would have actually finished it maybe no one would have added the function or taken a lot longer let's go through it one more time you first go to the project you want to contribute to it might be a project that you have used before like a package or a game you play and you are familiar with the code that's used you go to say contributing.md and if they have one, you read through it and see what the requirements and the way they contribute it and what their goal of the project is. Check if someone's already working on the issue, bug or feature, so you don't end up wasting your time on it and their time. You can check this with whatever the issue tracker, or crash, and of course, and of course any other chat rooms such as Discord, and you can discuss there whether anyone is actually contributing or adding to it. Follow any of their Git guidelines and code formats, so it, all matches and is nice and neat and that they will accept your PR. Once you start coding added features, maybe showcase it to the other developers if they have a Discord. When I was working on mine, I showed a video of it of what I'd come up with so far. Also tells other users that and developers that hey you're working on this feature, you don't need to work on it, you can work on something else. Create a new pull request and add any, add any of the priority flares that they needed. You may get some feedback but don't let that down just add just fix the issues that you have and if you you don't understand it ask for help and see how they be, would fix it themselves and hopefully and eventually your pull request will get merged and your feature or bug fix has now been added to the code repository then your name can be featured on credits you can now say yep i contributed to this project and if you're lucky maybe you'll appear in a update video or release and really, that's it. That's all there is to it. It's not that deep. There's no long process. You just really need to have a knowledge of the code. It does help to have some good knowledge in programming itself because it can be quite daunting to go into a very thick and deep code repository that's all intricate, a very large one. It can be very difficult to understand. So it does help to be very familiar and be able to read code effectively so you can contribute to it without breaking other systems or without getting frustrated. Sometimes it might be seem a bit boring as well if you're just sitting there trying to read it and understand it. But this is a, it's a you'll learn a lot and it's a good learning process. Especially if you're a graduate, you're gonna I think you're gonna stand up above the rest of everyone else if you're able to contribute to open source projects. I think it'll just look good, especially in situations where you are being hired and the packages they use is the one that you've contributed for. They're gonna be like, yeah, this is this person is familiar with this package that we actually use. Why don't we just hire him? And some projects can be a bit dead, and maybe you should take on the mantle. Little ray traces are called 
of raid that's not been updated really in three years and it's still using its stable release of 3.7 which came out in 2013 and i think something like this could use a bit more love and care and to extend it even further it's a great little little package if you want a little command line ray tracer kind of uses json format and without the any of these contributions we don't have great great software like godot blender or inkscape so please do contribute as much as you can if you're skilled and you want to help the community this is one of the best ways to do so alongside just creating issues and bugs fixes so get out there and start contributing i'll see you later